So um, this video had to be remade because apparently the first video attempt is because, well, when it was uploaded, YouTube blocked it because of copyright claims. So this is a redo of the video. Enjoy. Okay, guys, I need to tell you this. Mad Hatter is the best Batman villain to ever exist. Better than Joker, Harley Quinn, Riddler, Penguin, Scarecrow, Two-Face, and many more. Now, you might be wondering, Team Zug, why is Mad Hatter your favourite villain? Well, I'll tell you. So, a while back, I made a Batman tier list of the villains. But this was based on the animated series version, so... Yeah, so... I put some villains like Bane, Deathstroke, Rachel Ghoul, Sid the Squib, Baby Doll in Nice tier, and I put the iconic villains in like Joker, Riddler, Mr. Freeze, Penguin, Two Face, Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, Scarecrow, Catwoman in Cool tier. But then you got the Manhattan at God tier, and I'm going to explain why Manhattan deserves to be on this. On that tier list. So before we get to why I like Mad Hatter, we need to get to his backstory. So the Mad Hatter appeared in the original Batman comics. He was based on the Lewis Campbell, so I got that his name wrongs. Um, character Mad Hat the Hatter, or the Mad Hatter in Alice in Wonderland. But here in the Batman universe. The Mad Hatter's real name is Jarvis Tetch. And yeah, he used mind controls and also was kind of sense of Alice in Wonderland, sorry. But I gotta admit, it was pretty cool how they managed to get like, a character from a fairy tale into, a, a, into the comics. I don't think that would fly well today. Like, imagine they put like Thomas the Tank Engine in a Marvel DC universe. Yeah, that would not fly. So, yeah. However, the Mad Hatter wouldn't appear on TV until the Adam West Batman show, which um, he was played by someone who I forgot who it is, so forgive me. And I watched some clips with him, and he's alright. I mean, he wasn't a good Mad Hatter, but he was alright. However, he wasn't really obsessed with Alice in Wonderland. He was more obsessed with hats. I don't know why they did that. Yeah, um, he was kind of a popular character. Not, like, popular like um, Joker, Riddler, Penguin, or Catwoman. But he was kind of popular. But wasn't, well, a fan favorite by many people. And even the actor who played him wasn't a big fan of the role either. According to him, it was too childish. Because he was a more serious actor, I guess. So, yeah. However, the Mad Hatter would later return for the animated version of the show, I guess. However, he was voiced by someone else. Um, this time, instead of being obsessed with hats, he was obsessed with the Alice in Wonderland storyline. Yeah, I only saw like, the clips, and yeah, he's not a good Mad Hatter in the slightest. So, let's just move on to the good stuff. And finally, we're at the good stuff. The OG series, Batman the Animated Series. And this is where I'm going, I'm going to tell you why Mad Hatter is such a good character. The reason why he's good is because they reworked him to make him likeable and relatable, unlike the Adam West version. So his new backstory is that Jarvis Tetch used to be a scientist who worked at Wayne Enterprises. He was designed something like mind control headbuds. So, um, he could, like, mind control the mind. However, the Ma Jarvis Tetch has a crush on his co-worker, who's iron ironically enough called Alice from the Alice in Wonderland books. However, sadly for Ma Hatter, um, Alice is currently dating a guy named Billy, which kind of makes him sad, depressed, and a bit lonely. Then Bruce Wayne shows up to the office, well, where Jarvis works, and his boss was rude to him, and yeah, telling 
him. You should not keep Mr. Wayne waiting. Things like that. So, yeah, but Bruce Wayne gave Jarvis more time. And however, some good news came for Jarvis because um, Alice and Billy broke up. So he's like, yes, finally I could get a chance. But then he was like, oh, well, could a beautiful girl like her or someone like me, how could I impress her? So he decided that the best way to oppress Alice is to dress up as the Mahatter. So he literally go down to a store. I don't know where story get goes designed from, but who cares? And took Alice on a romantic date around Gotham City. But before I tell you what happens next, I gotta say, this is my favorite Manhattan design. I mean, just look at him. He's so cool looking, you know? So this is the OG Manhattan for me. And it's back to what I was saying. However, when... Manhattan and Alice were walking by the park. Two cr crooks um, tried to rob them. But however, Manhattan managed to put them under his control by putting the cards, the mind control cards, on their foreheads, making them control. And Manhattan was like, oh, just go jump in the river. And they were like, okay. And I got to admit, this is actually kind of a good plan on the Manhattan's hat. Sorry, um, Mahatta's idea. Well, basically, on one hand, what Mahatta said by go jump in the river was wrong and they could die. But, but could you really blame him? I mean, these guys are criminals. They probably robbed like hundreds of people. So it's a hit and miss question for me personally. They kind of deserved it, but at the same time, not. It's just hard when you look at it. However, Batman managed to save the crooks and got them back into, well, their minds. Anyways, Manhattan takes Alice to a restaurant and he mind controls everyone there. And then Manhattan takes Alice home and basically he was having a good time with the date. But Alice thought it was trying to um, cheer her up. However, unfortunately for Manhattan, Alice and Billy managed to get back together and... What made it worse, they're engaged. So, so the next day, Mahatta coming to work, about to give Alice flowers, only to discover that she and Billy are back together and they're engaged. And this is where Jarvis snap. I mean, he is furious and heartbroken at the same time. Like, you can feel bad for him. Like... Like, all he ever wanted is a girlfriend, someone to love him, someone to um, treat him with respect, and he wanted to give him love. But Alice broke his heart. So, basically, Mahatta decided he was going to do the one thing. Basically do a Bowser thing, you know? So, um, so he managed to brainwash his boss, and after that, um... He kidnapped Alice and Batman tried to stop him, but he managed to get away. And he had the most iconic line ever when Alice said, Jarvis, why are you doing this? For us, my dear, I didn't want it to be this way. However, Batman managed to um, find Jarvis Tetch, aka the Mahatta, at the park where he built like, a giant Alice in Wonderland maze. And I gotta say... This is basically the most insane thing ever. Like, how did my have to manage to build it all in such an, a quick time? He must be Bob the Builder or something like that. In fact, hmm. Hey, my hatter, if you um, ever become sane again, um, I know a place in England where Bob the Builder could use some extra hands. As you will. But anyways, my hatter and Batman had an insane um, fight scene. And Mahatta almost won. However, a dragon came and crushing him. Well, he didn't kill him, but it trapped him. And Billy came along to bring Alice back to reality by um, un mind controlling her. And they were back together. And we never see Alice ever again. And as for Mahatta, he's heartbroken, lost, upset. C cannot. Could not. 
cannot, could not, cannot join the dance. Those lines, those lines made me realize Matt Hatter is the best Batman villain. He's such a tragic character, and I'd say he might be the most tragic character next to Mr. Freeze. Because, well, there's two sides of Mr. Two sides between Mahata and Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze got the girl, but lost her. Mahata always wanted a girlfriend, so he never gets the girl. So it's really quite sad when you think about it. And I think this is the most overlooked fact about the Mahata. But the, but the reason why I like him doesn't end there. In my all-time favorite episode, Phantasm of Dream, Bruce Wayne, a.k.a. Batman, is trapped in a dream where... Bruce Wayne's parents never died and he gets everything he wants. Love, wealth, a family. And there's a Batman and it's driving Bruce Wayne insane. And the Batman is none other than Jervis Tetch, a.k.a. the Manhattan. And it, the truth comes out that Manhattan traps Bruce Wayne in a dream. And he can't get out unless Bruce Wayne jumps and basically dies, which he did. And it was so intense. And this, of course, made Batman wake up. And my hat was like, impossible! No one has the will to wake up from my dream machine. And I got to admit something. My hat might be even the smartest Batman villain because he built a dream machine. Most villains can't even dream of doing that. Like, the closest thing what happened, the closest thing that comes to this is Riddler's mind control game. But that's nothing compared to... Mahata's dream machine. In fact, Mahata could be, dare I say it, the smartest Batman villain ever. And another iconic moment is that when Mahata says, You ruined my life! I was willing to give you whatever life you wanted just to keep you out of mine! I gotta credit everything to his voice actor, Ronnie McDonald. Sorry if I got your name wrong. Um. He was perfect as the Mahato, and he had previous history with um, Batman and Alice in Wonderland. But the most popular thing he was remembered as, at least in my opinion, was that he was the one who read the audio book of Tim Burton's Batman movie. Well, it was a book, but you get the idea. Mahato was such a popular character, they actually brought him back in the new Batman adventures where he was redesigned and his redesign was all right I mean it's not special but I don't know something about him being a bit shorter and him being a little older just doesn't feel right with me but let me know what you think personally that's a whole discussion but we're not going to go into that sadly in 1998 Ronnie McDonald would pass away he was only 70 years old. So that's probably the main reason why Mahata didn't um, return after a few episodes. Like, his last ever appearance was in the Superman and Batman crossover where Superman was dressed up as Batman as a disguise. And um, Mahata was in a group with Rizzle and Bane. And this idea is cool. Like, imagine Rizzle, Mahata and Bane in a, like, a movie or or TV series, like the main villains. That would have been sick, man. But unfortunately, that was wasted potential. However, Mahata was, well, was given a much more key role as he kind of helped um, Superman and Robin, who was disguised as Batman, to help on the missing case of the microchips. So yeah, um, if that's not redemption, I don't know what is. Technically, Phantom of Dreams kind of redemption, but who knows. And I think that's probably the last time we actually saw the Manhattan because he didn't appear in Batman Beyond, not even a cameo appearance. So, yeah, I think it's because Ronnie McDonald passed away. They didn't want to recast him because, well, he was just an iconic role, which is confusing because characters like Scarecrow got recast, but not Manhattan. Really weird. However, that was the Mahata's final major appearance because he was absent for quite a while. Um, he only made like a cameo appearance in a few comics and Batman Brave and Bold, 
However, in the 2010s, he came back. Well, he was in the Lego Batman game, but he he played like a minor little role. Anyways, um, he appeared in the Arkham games, and he was pretty good. He appeared. Oh my, oh my God, that that looks horrible. Okay, I'm just gonna move on. He appeared in Batman Blood Blood, which is really cool. I like his role in that film. He was really cool. Shame that his head. Shame that he was killed off and his head exploded. Rest in peace, Mahato. And finally, how can I not forget the OG live action Mahato? The Gotham version. Mahato was awesome in that show. Minus his relationship with his sister Alice. Ben D Samuel, sorry I got your name wrong, was the perfect casting choice for the Mahato. So if you're watching this man, you did an amazing job. Give yourself a pat on the back. Well done, man. You did really good. In fact, you might be the best live-action Mahata that ever existed. Well done. You should watch Gotham. It's a great show. However, once must come up, must come down. As the Mahata's recent appearance was in the Harley Quinn show. Look, I have mixed feelings on that show, but what they did with Mahata, they did him dirty, man. The ugliest face I've ever seen, the ugliest colours, the ugliest buck tooth, and what even is that? A, a fingernail? Ugh. Yeah, you could tell why, you could tell that the writers stopped caring about Mahato at this point. Such a shame that this was Mahato's final fate. This, after so much good character development, led to this. Such a shame. But... At least Batman the Anime Series and Harley Quinn, the show, isn't from the same universe, so I'll give it a pass, I guess. But easily the weakest Mahata. Jarvis Tetch, aka the Mahata, might be forgotten by the public by some people, but for us Batman fans and the people who can relate to him, he's more than just a cash grab, silly Batman villain. He's one of the greatest things that ever existed. His relatability, his that his evil plans, even though they're not well, they're kind of evil, but whatever. Um, his likability, his his iconic lines, his awesome design, everything. Mahato is such a perfect character. Whether you watch the Gotham show or the animated series, Mahato will always have a place in my heart. And that's why I believe, hands down, Mahata is the best Batman villain ever, in my opinion. And, and no one will ever change my mind on that. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please go and give me a thumbs up. And also, one more thing. Justice for the Mad Hatter, baby.